In this video, I'm going to talk about uh, applications of second order linear ordinary differential equations with constant coefficients and an inhomogeneous term. And in particular, I'm going to focus on the phenomenon of resonance. So I'm going to talk about a couple cases. This one is going to be, this video is going to be about the um, mass spring system with no damping. So in the language of previous videos, I am going to set gamma equal to zero. That's what no damping means here. And so what we have is mx double prime plus kx equal. And now I'm going to be taking this mass spring and forcing it periodically. So I'm going to force it with a force amplitude f naught, and it's going to have a cosine waveform so that I'll be forcing it at a frequency omega. Okay, so the first step in solving uh, inhomogeneous second-order equation with constant coefficients is we calculate the characteristic equation. So that is mr squared plus k equals zero, and that gives us our values of plus or minus i times omega naught, where omega naught is, as it was before, the square root of k over m. And so... Um, that gives us a homogeneous solution x sub h equals c1 cosine of omega naught t plus c2 sine of omega naught t. So that's the homogeneous solution. And now we look for a particular solution. So let's look at a couple cases here. The first case is uh, with omega naught equal to omega naught. And this is the simpler one because there's no conflict between the forcing term and the homogeneous solution. And so our xp in this case is going to be a cosine omega t plus b sine omega t. And um, we could leave out that b sine omega t if we notice that there's a no y prime term here. Um, uh, but if you leave it in, what you'll find, and I'm not going to go through this, but you can go through the calculation and check it yourself. And what you'll find is that you get um, uh, A has to be equal to F naught divided by K minus omega squared M. And I'm going to rewrite that a little bit as f naught divided by, I'm going to factor out the m, and when you factor out the m, the, for the k becomes k over m, which is omega naught squared, and you get minus omega squared. And then for b, we find that b is equal to zero. And that's why we could have left out the sign term if we had seen that in advance, but I want you to just realize that if you miss that subtlety, it'll always fall out um, in the calculation. Okay, so that is our. Uh, particular solution then. So we have xp of t is equal to f naught over m times omega naught squared minus omega squared. And you'll notice the amplitude of this cosine solution is has an omega naught squared minus omega squared in the denominator, which means had we chosen any different from this, if we had chosen omega equal omega naught, this solution would have caused problems. It would have blown up. And so that's why it's a separate case. But first, let me just go through and show you how this works, what it looks like, um, the solution. So let's look at a simple initial condition. Let's say x of 0 is equal to 0, and x prime of 0 is equal to 0. So, um, so when we do that, we have to, and I'll let you do this as an exercise, but the full x of t is equal to c, or I guess it's, uh, yeah, c1 cosine omega naught t plus c2 sine omega naught t plus f naught over m omega naught squared minus omega squared cosine omega t. And when we calculate the c1 value and c2 value for this initial condition, we find that c1 is equal to minus f naught over m omega naught squared minus omega squared, and c2 is equal to zero. 
And so what we end up with then is if you simplify the X of T expression when the C, when those C values are factored in, you can factor out this common factor of F naught over M omega naught squared minus omega squared. And that's going to now multiply both a cosine omega t with a plus sign in front of it and a cosine omega naught t with a minus sign in front of it. Now, this is not the easiest function to interpret in advance. Uh, and so what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a trig identity. It's a trig identity that takes a little bit of calculation, so I won't go through it. Um, and it's not the type of thing I'd expect students in a course like this to just memorize, but it's useful to get an intuition or understanding of what the function looks like in this case, what the solution looks like. And so what happens when I swap this for the trig identities result is I get a two in front multiplying the new trig expression I'm gonna put in there. And then it becomes, instead of a difference of cosines, it's the sine of omega naught minus omega over 2t, and then the sine of omega naught plus omega over 2t. And so this has an interesting form. So if, if omega naught, well, whether omega naught is close to omega or not doesn't really matter, but it's actually easy to see what the form of this solution is if omega naught is not exactly equal to omega, but they're close. Because when they're close, omega naught minus omega is small. And that means that this has a low frequency. The sine term here is low frequency and long period. And this one is of frequency or period about omega naught, the natural frequency. So what does that look like? So what I what I do to, to draw that is I'll draw this function first. So I have the sine function with some frequency. And then it has a low frequency. So if this is a slowly changing number, so this function here is a number, a value or a function that goes, changes more slowly than this one like that, and that's multiplying this function. So the first sine function I drew is the basic frequency that we see. And then this one is sort of modulating the amplitude. And so instead of the having the full function coming up like this, this one is just going to come up to that level. And then I have to draw this down on this side too, because it's going to be multiplied. And so what I end up with is something that goes between and is enveloped by the outer one. So let's take a look at what that looks like in uh, Desmos. And then I'm actually gonna show you or play for you a sound that represents, that's uh, represented by this graph if you interpret these frequencies as uh, pressure wave sound frequencies. So here's what beats look like in um, Desmos. So, and I'm referring to the solution that we found as a beat because, well, you'll see when I play the sound in a moment. So what we have here in orange is the solution that we found, which is the difference of the cosines, cos omega t uh, minus cosine omega naught t. And here are the omega values. So here I've chosen omega naught to be three and omega is slightly larger. So if I increase omega naught, what you see is uh, the envelope amplitude decreases and um, you start to see less and less if I get rid of the envelope functions around them the orange signal becomes less and less obviously a sort of beat pattern but as I get closer to the frequency you can actually see without even having the envelope there you can see effectively the envelope and that's because you have more um, more periods per, per envelope period Up on top here I've plotted just the two components in blue and green. They've been shifted up. They should be centered to the origin, but those are the cosine omega t and cosine omega naught t functions. And you can see near the origin, they're very close. So their difference is zero, but because they're not exactly the same frequency, they drift apart and eventually are maximally different somewhere around here where you get the highest amplitude in their difference. 
and uh, and let me put those envelopes back in. And so that's what a beat looks like in Desmos as a plot. Let me go over to MATLAB and I will show you what it looks like or sounds like. So here I've got a uh, code that does simple thing. It defines a time domain and that's what we'll hear. That's the length of time we'll hear the signal. Here I've defined omega naught as 400 and omega as 470. The amplitude of the signal is two, so that's uh, determined by F naught over M. And then we have the signal itself, which is the sign of the difference of the two uh, over two, and then the sign of the sum of the two frequencies over two, multiplied by time. And then I'm gonna plot the time signal and just let you look at it for a second and think, what is this gonna sound like? And then the sound will come on. So I will, um, I will run that and we will see what it sounds like. Here we go. Okay, so that is what a beat solution sounds like and looks like. All right, in the next video, I will talk about resonance itself.